So colleagues, really a pleasure to be with you today here. And what I'm gonna be talking about, is something that we heard this morning. How could we rethink the agri-food system? How could we redesign the agri-food system? But this time, it was based on science, innovation, and data. And I wanna start where, where we are right now. Is this what we want? Is this what we have been working on for the last century? Is it desolation that we want for our, the next generation, for our kids? It's feeling helpless when you see disaster after disaster after disaster. And I think this year, particularly, after two years of COVID, we are caught into a war that is disrupting the supply chain, and that is really hitting again the most vulnerable. And the pictures like this really make us think, it's, it's, I don't want to be a kid like one of these kids. I don't want my kids to see it. I don't want the next generation to go through that. And that's where we have to look for solutions. The solutions are all, the world is changing, and we have an opportunity in time to make sure that every kid has a secure food. But not only kids from the north, kids as well in the south. We have to be inclusive. We have to look at how technology and innovation can help us to get there. And I'm going to move very quickly to the bright side. The bright side is science, technology, and innovation. We have seen tremendous development in the latest years. If you look at AI and quantum computing, five years ago, we were not able to do many things. If you look at the omics, it started very recently. It's really contemporary history. And you look at nanotechnology, you look at so many technologies that were never as mature as they are today. And we need to grasp that. We need our scientists to speak up. We need our scientists to really play our role. Because finally, we got food security and agri-food system everywhere. Since last year with the UN Food System Summit, people are talking climate change and food security. People are talking biodiversity, climate change, health, and agri-food system. So this is a window of opportunity for us to really use the best science. And as Lilian said, use it for all. This time, we cannot afford to leave people behind. And that's exactly what is encapsulated in the new strategic framework of FAO. So FAO started talking agri-food system six, seven years ago. But our strategic framework it's all about transforming agri-food system. And the way we want to transform it is that we want at this time to make it more efficient. We want to make it more inclusive. We want to make it more resilient and more sustainable. And we do that through an umbrella of betters. We believe that there are four betters that every kid deserves to have. We need to have a better production, and there is tremendous science that exists right now, and that the advancement of science will allow us to do more to get a better production. Because even if you don't believe in it, and I know environmentalists don't want us to produce more, we need to produce more because the population is growing. And we need to produce more, more smartly, with less. And that's really the dramatic things that we need to find solution for, and there is in science. We need a better nutrition. We are beyond talking quantity. And we did that with the Green Revolution. It played the role, but it's not anymore the talk of today. We need better nutrition for all. And for me, it hurts me. That's why I brought a lot of kids' pictures, when I know that kids are not eating well, and that in the first thousand days, if they don't eat well, they are wasted forever. This is really something we have to stop. And we need a better environment again. Climate change is not anymore debated, it's a reality. And we need to produce better right now, keeping in mind the environmental footprint. And the last one, it's a better life. And better life for us as FAO, as a member, as a, a member organization that work with 194 countries, we want to make sure that this time, farmers and small-scale producers have a better life and better livelihood. And what we have, if you look around the circle, we have accelerators. Accelerators are technology, innovation, data, and complement. And if you look at it closely, all of them need science. All of them requires a lot of science and a lot of innovation. And we do that keeping in mind gender, youth, inclusion, 
And all these things, we take them really at heart, and we are designing a program to make sure we, we, we address them. I want to take the example of the One Health, because it's very relevant to this conference. For the One Health, I mean, finally, we understand that things are interconnected. Finally, we say, yes, human health is connected to animal health, is connected to, to plant health. To, this is really a bit late to, to talk about it. So I'm very happy that food safety is taking the One Health approach, because that's the only way we can move forward. So the One Health approach has taken some time before people believe in it. I remember it was the first discussion with Canada and Australia and many in the European as well. But I'm very happy that we are coming to a point where we understand it, where we are pushing for it. And that's one of the areas, again, like food security, like malnutrition, where we need everybody to play a role. We need everybody to come on board, to believe in it. We need collaboration, we need advocacy, we need to share data, we need to share information, particularly with the South. We are on this planet, there is no boundaries. The boundaries are created by us. A virus or any microorganism doesn't stop because he doesn't have a passport or a visa. So we have to get outside the bubble that we have created and understand that ecosystems are created the way they are for a reason, and that nature takes over always. So we need really to bring that One Health approach and that interconnectedness in everything we do. And as, as an optimistic, I want to leave you with a, with a message of hope. I think really scientists, more than ever now, need to speak up. We need really to make sure that we are heard, that we communicate very well with the scientists, of course, but also with policymakers and with the grand public. We can't let really the grand public listen in to the social media of people that have no clue what they are talking about. We need to step up, we need to speak up, we need to use science. Right now, I think we have technologies that can increase productivity in Africa. Why don't we do it? Right now, we have technologies that can multiply it by five, six, seven. We need to act, we can't wait more. And for me, sincerely, as a girl from the South that made it to the North, I always think that nobody of us deserves to go to bed hungry and that we need to act. And science and innovation and technology are beautiful. They were not created to be reserved to only some of us. They were created to really help people. Thank you very much.